One of the guys playing the most creative picks in solo queue. Maybe that carried over to scrims as well. And the Zig's now coming in for Shalka. Good setup on the bottom side. Inax we know is a very solid mage player. An important note, if you've been out of the loop, Gilius is now playing again for Shalka No Fear. So, you know, we might get some trash talk. We might get some explosive early game. <laughs> I'm ready to see what Gilius can do. Yeah, I mean, I like it here, going for the very early Lee Sin as well. Now a Callista pick on the side of G2. This could be a Callista Senna bot lane, but that feels weird to me. I think it's probably going to be up in the top lane for Wonder here, something that's been taking solo Q by storm, but dominates in just about every single matchup. I love it because it's been taking solo queue by storm, but its win rate is abysmal right now. It's in like the low 40s on patch 10.5. Maybe it got better on 10.6. Yeah, Who that's because it's but... a bunch of like Maokai and set players trying to play Callista. Like what? <laughs> They've never what had to click doing? that many times in their life. They have no idea what they're doing. But we'll have to see what Wonder can do. And the thing that I love about this is that like if I look at Shalka, their strongest player in my mind is Oda Wamne, And Wonder's still like, whatever, I'll take this pick. I'll dominate lane on it, I'll be a monster, could still technically go bottom, but I think you're right. I think we're seeing the wonder uh, Callista top. Yeah, but like, how do you even beat Callista top lane? Like, it feels like you just need the better jungler, and I don't know, like, Gilius coming back in here off against Yankos, that's going to be a pretty tall order to fill here, especially when Yankos is going to be on the wreck side, so... Oduwamne is going to have to dig deep, otherwise it is not going to look very good at all. Now, now circling back to the, the pick of the Ziggs, you mentioned Inax, great, you know, mage bot lane player. I remember at Worlds when he was playing in Unicorns of Love, he drew Heimerdinger bands in basically every single game, so I'm at least excited to see him go back to one of these, you know, mage picks that he was so well known for in 2019. And look, on 10-5, the, the tower play gold is higher, so Zig shredding through towers early game is a, is a big reality of this pick, right? Especially when there's only one or two plates remaining. I want to see what Inax can do, because outside of Odawamna, Inax is the, kind of the other guy that I look at, and the caps Mickey X bottom lane, while it can be incredibly, incredibly explosive, is volatile. It's explosive both ways, and going up against Ziggs definitely is going to just further accentuate that. But the LeBlanc, yeah. the Corky, now the set band away as well. Yeah, definitely leans towards Caps and Mickey doing very well, but every once in a while they gotta toss a, a bit of int in that one, so we'll see what we get this time. Now, an Azir here on the side of Shalka is setting them up with a ton of teamfight damage later on in the game, and now they're gonna have to fill out top lane with something that's like super AD heavy, right? Because right now all you have for physical damage is going to be the Lee Sin. Like, trying to think of what's left on the table, like a Renekton's up there, but you don't want to run that into a No, a I can't Kalista. be a melee champion. You can't play a melee champion into Callista. It's the, like literally the dumbest decision you <laughs> can <doomed>. possibly make. <laughs> Who's left? Uh, I mean, like, question. in theory, Lucian like, top? there's, like, a cannon you go for, a Lucian. Neither of those champions, like, I super love. Like, Jace is still open. If they wanted to pair Ooh. that next to, to a Ziggs, go for a little bit of poke options with that one. Could the be fun. Jace option. And now we have the Galio locked in as well. Uh, potentially the, the farming Galio alongside the Fasting Senna. We'll have to see what G2's plan is. Uh, important to note as well, of course, that if this Akali does get locked in, we've also seen the Senna Akali bot lane pairing. Time to find out exactly how they want to focus on this one. All right. Okay. So now with the Akali locked in, that's like almost certainly going to be run in the mid lane up against this Azir, which I think is a good pick, especially if you're taking over uh, once she does get a couple of items underneath her belt. To me, this is reading as Senna Galio bot lane with the Callista up top side. And then the, the only question left for G2 is like, are you actually going to do the fasting Senna or not? Because I'm more inclined to believe on this patch, fasting Senna, her power did get reduced. But then again, like Mickey was one of the guys, it's like, hey, let's run the Galio next to the fasting Senna because he can farm really easily with Q2. But Ender, before we talk about that, I gotta give you props. The Jace pick does come through for Shalka No Fear, so good prediction there. Uh, we were running out of ranged AD top champs, so I feel like your <laughs> selections were limited, but well predicted nonetheless. And now we have uh, Asena, Galio bot side. We're gonna have to wait to get in game, though, to really see who is farming, but I agree with you. Like, I think with the soul rate dropping, with getting less from souls, Senna needs that money or she has to build, like, support support, not this lethality stuff. And I think support support Senna is pretty terrible. Yeah, I, I don't want to see any Athenes in my games on the Senna. Get that, get that noise out of here. But I do actually, like, honestly, like, G2 have some, you know, the super lane dominant top lane, or like, Yankos Wonder are going to try to take over this game. But if it goes late, Shalka have really strong poke tools, really good disengage as well. G2 do not have the ability to force fights very easily. So I would say that if Shalka can, like, keep it in and, like, not let the side lanes go to, go haywire up against this Kalista, like, they have a pretty solid comp, I feel like.
Look, I actually have a lot of faith in Schalke. I don't really have a lot of faith in anyone against G2 Esports, but overall, it's going to be a hype matchup. Have to see who comes out on top, G2 Esports versus Schalke No Fear. An ender. As we enter the rift for G2 versus Schalke, I want to bring back to our minds that important point that we made here earlier. 258 days since G2 beat Schalke. Schalke out of playoffs. If G2 lose here, they're not going to get another chance until Summer Split enter. Oh my god, dude, it can, might be. Can their pride handle it? I don't think it can. Like, that's just going to destroy G2's mental before playoffs even starts. Like, how do you have the mental edge against a team like Fnatic who just goes around and bullies teams like Schalke all the time if you can't beat them in an entire year? I just think that there's nothing to be done. And of course, for G2 Esports, they're they're playing for first place. You know, they need to find everyone they can to kind of stay ahead of the pack. Obviously, OG and Fnatic hungry on their heels. And if G2 somehow find themselves in an 0-2 week, we could see a big shift in the standings. And already now we have the terror of Gilius back on the rift. Frankly, I don't know what to expect. I was underwhelmed last time we saw him enter. I think it's safe to say, but I don't want to blame that on Gilius because the entire roster was a bit of a mess. We'll have to hold that. There's some early aggressive trading here. Odawame Look. not going to win that one. My <laughs> god, that's a lot of level 1 no. damage. That's absurd. <laughs> At level 1, you're not going to have any fun in this matchup. I think if you can recall on a Serrated Dirk, maybe you've got a chance if you can get your jungler up there. But again, I think Yankos is just going to try to split the map. And G2 already have the deep vision trying to make that happen. But I would like to bring us back to Gilius. Because you say you don't know what to expect. I say Shalka came in to this game and came into the back half of the season with a plan, right? The season obviously started off terribly for Schalke, right? Nothing was going well, they couldn't pick up wins, except against G2. They determined, you know, playoffs, that's pretty cool. But you know what's cooler than playoffs? Beating an, a world's finalist. Not, not a world champion, a world finalist. That's way cooler. And what are G2's weaknesses? Okay. Bot lane. I'm with you. And wildcard teams. Now, here's the thing. Schalke can't get five imports from wildcard regions. They can only get two. So what do they do? They bring in an imported bot laner, Inax, formerly from the, uh, you know, from the... The LCL. Russian, the LCL. <laughs> I was like, oh, why am I forgetting yeah, this there you one? Go. Exactly. Perfect. And uh, they, they bring him in a bot laner. Who's just going to take over this game against Caps? What can G2 do? Uh, not a whole lot, which seems to be a similar story for Gilius as he gets bullied there. Although we take a look at the bot side trade, Mickey going to get knocked very low. Ignite coming out, but he is going to be able to walk that one off. And you said it, Ender. Inax, the terror from the LCL, here to shut down the G2 bottom lane. This is has to be the most hard force narrative I've ever heard in my life, by the way. Yeah, but it goes deeper, too, because, like, G2, they struggled against the Gigabyte Marines, who played, you know, wacky bot lane champions like the Nocturne. You know what's wacky? Ziggs. Like, is Caps even going to expect it? I don't know. I don't think so. How deep into the mind games Shalka must be to counter out their opponents. But as we check in across the map, we can't see it is the Fasting Senna, Ender. Caps not going to be getting a lot of resources. And as you can see, Mickey isn't either, because he's already down 10 CS. <laughs> he's asking for scraps. He says, please, Mr. Ziggs, please, sir, may I have another CS? Caps, though, might just be giving up his life on that one. He's going to have to make his way out to safety. Very close exchange, but a bit of stealth there from the Black Mist will ferry him out. I mean, in all seriousness, I really like the Ziggs pick up against Senna. Uh, a, I think Senna has a really tough time getting like control over minion waves. Like her only wave clear tool is her Q, and that's not going to be super reliable. So Ziggs can like go for this early reset, like we saw Inax move for here. But also, I wonder if he's thinking, well, Senna actually locks herself in place whenever she goes for an auto attack. So that just means like really easy bombs to land if you're timing it with her uh, with her going for last hits. So, I don't know. I think there's a lot of good things to be said about that one. Easy bombs, easy Qs. Of course, double Dorans and potentially more AP to come through from Mickey may balance out some of that lane pressure. Uh, Winds of War can do a decent amount of damage, but for now, very much Shaka favorite. Abadage also bullying in the mid lane, kind of as expected in any Akali matchup pre-6, at least range versus melee. So, Ender, top lane may look terrible. Dude. That's a 20 CS deficit, I'm not going to lie. That You leave that lane behind. You, there's, there's nothing <laughs> left up there for anybody but Wonder. But on the other hand, the rest of the lanes... 
doing just fine. Well, it's very clear that the Jace is not a lane counterpick to the Callista, at least yet. He had to go back very early with Yankos uh, making the invade play on Degilius and sort of zoning him away from that side of the map. But like, and now we are in a situation where Yankos can just look for a dive up against this guy or just force him away from the tower because I think that that's pretty much what you're trying to do with this Callista is just make sure you can deny as much CS, as much gold uh, from the enemy top laner as possible. Once again, 10-5, tower plate gold is increased back up to 160, so a lot of money to be grabbed here from Wonder. And I want to say, your comment, like, hey, it's not a lane counter yet. When you're down 30 CS, do you ever really I get the chance? I don't think it will ever if, be a lane it's, counter. You're never going to be a lane counter if you can't if you can't farm, unless you have some ludicrous, like, kane esque power spike where you get to transform into a different champion. Yeah, I I'm telling you, the best counter pick to Callista top is just having a, a, a jungler, you know? And that just sits there, literally never leaves the lane. Like, you just gotta get up there, level 2, level 3, put her down, make her TP back, kill her again. Like, otherwise, she can just push up with impunity. Ooh, good damage going into Mickey, but he's feeling frisky, he wants to go back in for that trade. Meanwhile, the top lane, Wonder, continuing to do a lot of damage. Yanko's gonna fish for this one, the flash through. Now Yanko's trying to finish it off, but I think he might just have to give up his life. Dude, the pullback though, <laughs> level 6, coming in clutch, Wonder. So disrespectful. <laughs> I cannot believe they got away with that. <laughs> How do we? They can actually turret dive so well. When Rek'Sai hits level 6, Yankos is going to be able to drop tower aggro twice over with his own ult plus the Callista ulti as well. Like, oh man, it's brutal. And, and you can already see it. It's going to be the uh, Sanguine Blade Rush out of Wonder as well for the lethality, the attack speed, the lifesteal. Like, it's the ultimate 1v1 item in the top lane, and, and just watching this replay one more time, right? Like, it looks dire for Yankos. He's like, yeah, he gives up his life. Everyone got fooled. All of a sudden, he gets yoinked straight out of there, thanks to that Callista ulti tied to her jungler, so... Uh, you know, uh, top lane, it's uh, looking pretty over. My man Odawamne in the top lane just bought a coal. He's gotten 20 farm in the last seven minutes Wait. and he bought a coal. Wait that a second, dude. And, I'm, look, I'm with you. Like, it's, you probably just can't buy anything else, if we're completely honest. A little bit of extra lifesteal, like, that's all you can do is kind of weather the storm. Yeah, but... yeah. Well, he's like, he needs, you know, bonus gold any way he can, right? The problem is, I don't actually think he's going to have 100 CS until, like, 25 minutes. Oh, but luckily, there is some value here to topside. He has given experience over to Gilius, who now outlevels him. That's... You love to see it, folks. Yeah, so, you know what you don't love to see, though, is Wonder setting up a freeze against the Flashless Jace that's two levels down. Yeah. No, I, I have to imagine that this is the worst game. I thought Odawamne would hate playing tanks, but this is significantly worse. <laughs> this this is the true nightmare state. And now, Gilly's is going to be in trouble. The smite can come oh. out. He can go up there, too. He's going to dash through. Gilly's going to try to kick back, but there's nothing left for him. Gilius goes down. This is just mean. This is actually just mean. <laughs> G2 with a second rotation Callista pick, and they're just absolutely dumpstering up here right now. Like, if I'm just looking at the gold difference uh, across all the lanes, like, oh, Shalka, they've got an advantage down bot side, right? Senna's not really farming, so, like, that's unfair, but Oduwamne looks like he's playing Fasting Jace in the top lane in this matchup, and that's just not part of the plan. Yeah, this is... This is a little bit grim. Perks is going to get knocked back, so Avadog is hoping for something, but the dash back through comes in, and Perks will finish this one out, but does get the flash advantage. Big set all. Oh, and that is team play right there from G2 Esports. That's just sick. G2, all over the map, all the time. I mean, came in as heavy underdogs in this matchup, but I think they might just be able to turn it around, Dracos. <laughs> Look, man, all I'm saying is, yeah, we may have read the situation wrong. 258 days may have been the perfect amount of days. Oh. Stop shopping, Per. Gilius. Through. The flash, the Q. Gilius, right back on the stage. Perk's biggest weakness. Players from wildcard regions. The TCL time has done Gilius well. <laughs> Absolutely gonna make his way out of this one. The Ignite's ticking, ticking, but it won't take him out yet. He's gonna be able to walk his way out of that one. Uh, meanwhile, up top lane, there's a Rift Herald down, and the first top lane tower has already died. This is a situation where I, I wonder if Oduwami is like, can you actually please just take my inhibitor? That way at least I'm like forced to get some minions. And this is just going to go from bad to worse. Maybe they can get something done bot lane, but Mickey's just going to walk that one off, and that's a level 6 Jace. It's hard because we have to keep talking about it, but oh. it's like doing a newscast about a train wreck, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, we need to I talk about it. Why am I it. laughing? It's our, it's, it's, it's our <laughs> job to talk about it, but, but no one, like, there's nothing else to say. It's a train wreck. Like, I don't have any updates yeah. for you. It's getting, it's getting worse. It's just bad. <laughs>
The, the CS discrepancy keeps growing. The coal is not getting very many stacks. This is a dark timeline, Ender. Yeah, right now it's Sanguine Blade plus completed boots against two long swords and a coal. And that's how you cast it. You just blade. keep updating people on how vast the gap is. You know, people talked about the gap shrinking for so many years, but I'm telling you, top gap is just huge this game. The gap between Callista and any other top laner <laughs> seems, to, seems to be the gap that people need to be more worried about if the LPL and this Wonder performance are any indication. Okay, but like, I sort of want to see a Wonder versus the Shy Callista 1v1. That would be so boring. Yeah, wait, no, no, but here's the thing. Do you know how, how <laughs> skill is determined in the Callista 1v1? Is it when you rend? N yes, but it's do you rend before you have lethal? Because if you do, you instantly lose the 1v1. Because the other person just keeps stacking. They're like, oh, I see exactly how much damage your rend did. Oh, that perfect. sounds about as exciting as the Yumi one for alls that people have been playing. Like, Yumi versus Yumi one for all, that's what that sounds like to me, Ender. Wait, but the Yumi cruiser is actually so sweet. We just have one Yumi hop in the other. Mm. You're Beautiful. absolutely out of control, Ender. That's See, no, I actually remember, though, I, I had a long, long debate about this back on the playtest team, because, you know, that's what we did with our time. Does, when you have Yumi's in one for all, does, like, oh. one hop into one, and then, so, like, one hops into two, or mm -hmm. sorry, 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 one hops into, or sorry, two hops into one, does three hop into two, or does three hop into one? You know, like, which direction does it go? You gotta split it up, just like Odawamne is gonna get split from his life, right back into the fountain. That one happened a little bit too fast for me to add, and I don't have an answer for you, Ender. Oh. And it looks like they don't have an answer to this Callista either, although Inax, good knockback. I gotta say, the Shaka bot lane, if you look at it in isolation, having a great time down here, because now the Callista's in trouble. It's gonna get healed up and zoomed out by the Fasting Senna. Caps will make it just in time, but still G2, more than 3k up, approaching 4k now as they start to collect farm across the map. Oh, the chase oh. blink! Look at the TP! Oh. They hit the hook, they hit the hook! She's dead! They got him! Man down, Gilius! With the shutdown, it's everything that they need, and Caps is just next on the menu. They're murdering G2, it's happening, Ender! The underdogs, G2, are getting decimated by the might of Shalka. Everything going as expected here. Actually, that was like a sweet play from Oduwanda. He is getting absolutely murdered in the top lane. First, it was against Wonder. Second, it was against Percy. He's like, hey, let me just get down there. Absolutely get that shutdown kill on over towards him. All right. And he didn't even lose an inhibitor for it. What a trade. After that play, we abandoned the meme narrative. Today okay. has been a day of upsets, and after a play like this, I think I think Shalka could actually be in it, because when you see this kick come through from Gilius, the follow-up's there, second close is locked down, she dies, and now Shalka feel like they're right back in the game. Yeah, I mean, they're able to chase down for a lot. I, I still don't know if they're right back in the game, right? Like, again, Kalista, whoever she matches against, she's going to have a 1,500 gold lead minimum, right? She is riding on so much gold at the moment. Um, but again, like, Shalka's team isn't really meant to, like, go for scrappy, spread-out fights. So that's the real test for them, assuming they can sort of, like, stop the bleeding for now, which, again, is going to be really difficult because Wonder's just taking over whatever lane he goes into. And is going to have to wait a long time before that team if he does return, um, I do think they have the ability on an equal footing to actually have the superior 5v5. I mean, I think at the end of the day, it's just about can you kill Wonder, because that's 2,500 of their 3,000 gold lead is in the back pocket of Wonder. Now, Yankos has been locked up. The chain CC is there. Can get pulled back by Callista. Is going to go under the ground. Can now get immediately pulled back again, but Wonder's actually put himself in harm's way. He's now trying to make his way out to safety. And X throwing down a bit of damage on the Ziggs, but he's going to be in trouble because Perks okay. right on the backside. They managed to take him out. Oda Wamne now on a killing spree from not being able to farm to find him. Plenty of kills down here on the bottom side. Double kill going through for Perks. And Abadage, though, now on the chase. Mickey has to give his life for this one. And Gilius on a killing spree as well. Ender... It well and truly might just be the day of upsets. Wait, it's actually an even fight right there. Like, Shulk are getting down and dirty and they're making it happen. They've got good scaling picks. I, I like what I'm seeing so far. In all honesty, still down in gold here, but the more time they can build for Abadage to, you know, get beefy for Odoamne to stack the coal, um, you know, it's just going to get better and better. I might be jumping the gun a bit, but... I'm just impressed. I think so many teams would roll over and die when their top laner is as far down as Odawamne was, but credit to him, credit to Shalka for finding fight after fight, for punishing Wonder for kind of not being completely isolated. Obviously, Yankos was there as well, but finding the shutdowns onto Callista, still a massive gold lead individually, as you said earlier, still cannot be matched in a 1v1, but in these team fight scenarios, 
Shalka are uh, matching G2 at least. Yeah, in this fight, at the start, like, Dreams does a really good job, because he's the one that, of course, picks up Yankos, and then also uses a stopwatch to survive that initial burst, leading to the kill going down over. Unfortunately, he couldn't get his ultimate down on towards Wonder right away, uh, but even then, it's still two quick kills going over uh, in the favor of Shalka. And then, as soon as Perks has to flash over the wall to chase down Inax, now, all of a sudden, he, the next person with, like, the most money in his pocket, the strongest player on G2 that's still alive, is isolated from this fight, and Mickey he gets stuck inside his own jungle. And credit to Perks, now 3-1-1 one, one wasn't uh, the hugest participant in some of those early exchanges. It was a lot of focus around the top side of the map, but making his presence known in that last fight, and now we check in on the top side of the map. Not all lot's going to happen here, just a bit of a trade of vision, more time alone for Wonder on the top side. CS lead remaining very large, 60 in his favor as the Blade of the Rune King is just about completed. Will be even harder to lock down, and it's... I've never seen a game so much about landing a single skill shot on a single champion, but it's pretty much just all about who can actually CC Wonder. And yeah, it's going to be like Gilius trying to find some kind of an insect play. Maybe Abadagi gets involved too. I, I would say like the, the nice thing about Shalka when we do look into these fights is like even if they can't lock down Wonder, Kalista's relatively short range as a champion. So if she's ever jumping forward and hitting someone that's not Nautilus, she's going to have to go through like uh, like the soldiers from Azir. Is oh boy, we got to dive in the bot lane. Ooh, knock back. The knock up's going to come through, but Abadagi's just going to swoop his way out of that one. The burn Mickey's all for it as well. And that is an AP Galio. He's building towards the Protovel, so pretty big deal to lose out on that ultimate. But in the meantime, Kalista, of course, queen of objective control with this rend, is just going to be able to grab the first strike for G2 Esports. Mountain going in their favor. Yep, able to pick that one up. Meanwhile, Shalka a little bit slow on this rotation over, but Inax has so much damage. Oh, Cass has to flash out. Snare's going to connect. Cass so very, very low. He's parting. He's ticking from the Ignite, and he's going to get taken down. Sniped over the wall. It's perfect from Inax, but it's not enough to save his life. As Yankos <laughs> will grab one back in exchange. Did Dreams just flash Ignite caps from over the wall right there to secure the kill? Because, like, damn, son! <laughs> Yo, between that, that hook and the last fight, and... Look, I, re I respect Dreams immensely for a play like that. That's how you win fights. Now, in this case, it was an even fight, and he gave up his flash and his ignite, but, like, whatever. You take Yo, Shalka, Shalka are taking the even fights right now, Draco. Let, let's watch this one more time. Inax able to pop the tower. Maybe would have liked to have his W to set up for the bomb damage, because Cap slashes away from that. But, yeah, the flash ignite. It's like the mini flash from Dreams 2 into ignite. Doesn't even end up getting the kill, because Inax was able to pick that one up still. But, hey, the, the effort is noted. We appreciate you. I respect it. Still, 2k difference. Everything is really about the Callista. Of course, Caps is, or not Caps, rather, Perks is quite strong and is only going to get scarier and scarier, especially for a lot of these, uh, well, not a lot of these, the Ziggs, specifically. The Ziggs has to be very scared, Inax has to be very scared about this Akali as we get later into the game, but good news is the Azir, the Jace, have tools to get Akali away. Yeah. That, that sort of thing, right, is like, if Shalka are undisciplined in fights and allow a player like Perks coming in on a flank or a Yankos to split them up and, like, drive them away, all of a sudden the fight becomes so easy for G2. Because if Kalista only has to worry about, like, a couple targets, same thing for Perks, like, the fight is easy. But the second Shalka are fighting in, like, a, in, like, a tight, you know, passway, uh, passage inside their jungle or something like that, and you have the zone control of Abadage's soldiers, the bombs on the ground from Inax 2, and you can take fights slowly... Like, Shalka's comp is actually going to thrive in those situations, but again, they have to stop G2 from driving them apart and splitting up these fights. But it is so difficult. When the Akali is so strong, when the Kalista has so much agency, the pressure is definitely on for Shalka, no fear. They've had a good showing so far. The difficulty is there's not really any major objectives for them to threaten around that could force G2 to come to them. So it's just going to be a vision game, and it's going to be a bit of a stalled out game. It's only 19 minutes in. Baron will be up in one minute, but... G2 really the only team that can consider Baron at this point in the game with the combination of the Callista and the Senna. Should be easy to take it quickly and healthily. I have big news for Odwame. The call has been completed. So even though they will likely lose their mid lane tower in this situation, the late game bet has paid off. Here we go, mid lane. Big fight going to be breaking out. Now Mickey X off to the backside, but he does manage to get the shield clutch coming in there. Now Gilius with the one locked up and immediately taken down. He overstays his welcome and Inax 
Not gonna find the ulti there to close out the kill, but Abadagi now pushing it off to the Ooh. side. It's perks. Goes into the shroud, dashes right back over. Mickey immediately into the back line. The fairy that they want to is there as well. Oduwamne still alive, running for his life. There's an axe on the backside, but he doesn't have any mana. The Ziggs is out of mana. He cannot do the damage. He cannot close the fight. And Shalka absolutely getting blasted in the back. Half of your dreams tries to make the hero play, but it is simply too little, too late. Hold back there by the Cliss to ultimate, and G2 will walk away. G2 are on a rampage here. Caps between the towers as well, just trying to find something right there. They pounced. The second Gilius went down, and Shulk were still willing to commit in towards the fight. G2 just went flying across there. I think Yankos and Perks picked up some air miles with their ulti right there, because Inex, or, or Abadage rather, could not escape from that whatsoever. Just when it, it felt like Shulk were starting to gain some momentum, G2 just shut them straight down. X? All right, that was a little bit, bit greedy there, a bit high risk play. Didn't expect Perks to be there, but Shalka moving right back on the map to get some vision down. However, you're completely right, Ender. I mean, we were kind of coming to a close in the gold lead. It was a 2k advantage for G2. They were very far ahead, but there were ways for Shalka to come back. But after a fight like that, things are going from bad to worse. Yeah, it's a bit uncomfortable, too, because Shalka are actually the ones forcing there. Dreams finds the initial pick on Tamiki, but that's where they should have called it, right? They have a tower down that should zone G2 away, but Gilius goes in without the rest of the team. Then Abadagi says, hey, I can pick off Perks, but with the Galio ultimate and the Shroud, Perks is able to then get away, and this means that now the fight does look super, super messy. Inax is in the back of the fight without any mana left whatsoever, so Shalka just fought... In, I feel like all of the wrong positions going away from their towers into the jungle, overextending with individual players one by one, and just misreading the situation in terms of like how much damage they could actually deal onto an economy. And Shalka thus far have, you know, always studied to fight on their terms, and then G2 have been able to keep it even. So when they start and they make mistakes, these one or two small individual mistakes, small individual decisions that don't pan out, instantly turn into a massively dominant team fight from G2 Esports. And now Baron is up. G2 can start to push their vision forward. They've broken mid lane. And if you're Abadage, if you're Inax, you are terrified of perks. You don't want to be caught in a side lane against perks or Wonder in this game. But honestly, I, I think that Wonder could be well suited to not go bot lane, like hard commit for that towards the split push. The second G2 want to go for the bear. Oh! oh. Yikes, big damage. Abadage is now in trouble. Perks gonna get kicked out. Gilius now trying to find the follow-up. The shield does go through. Perks with the fancy footwork trying to make it over the wall, but it's not going to be enough. No, the dash to safety, the burn, the tick, and that's gonna be it. At the end of the day, challenging smite, challenge accepted, and lost. Perks knocked out of that one. All right, Shalka are able to make it happen and shut down Perks. At the same time, though, Wonder is pushing bot side without a minion wave there is going to take a lot of damage before he heals it back up because, of course, he does have those double lifesteal items. What I was trying to say before that pick went down was that with the Blade of the Room King plus Sanguine Blade especially, you can shred through Baron so quickly. Or, or Towers if, you know, there's only one enemy nearby because even if no one is near you, you still get that attack speed bonus, which is incredible for Baron down objectives. Yeah, and you can see, while the damage isn't quite as oppressive as it was in the early game, Wonder if left alone can really decimate anyone. Gilius, very confident to dash forward, quite frankly. And Wonder kind of just playing on the edge, trying to force as much attention. Wow! But once again, Dreams lands the hook, but Binky's on the way in. I don't think they're going to be able to shred through Wonder. He's ticking down. The Ignite is not enough. And Mickey, the front line that G2 need to keep Wonder safe. The entire team collapsing to try to make this one happen. And still, Shalkar are playing on the edge. Shalkar are taking risks. They're going to back off. Caps arriving. Their signal to retreat. Inex is here as well to clear the way, but G2 playing so well around the threat of Engage. Honestly, I really like how aggressively Dreams is looking for these hooks, right? Like the last time it didn't pay off, but he is still going for them over and over because you look at the team comp, it's really just Dreams and then like Abadagi or Gilead's having an insane ultimate, but more than not, more often than not, it is just going to be Dreams with the ability to find these fights. So when he sees a Q, he is going to take it. And uh, the hope is the rest of his team is able, or is in a position to be able to back him up for those moves. And normally in a game like this, you look at the carries and you say, hey, their flash is incredibly important. You can win any fight where that flash isn't available. But in this game, you look at Dream's flash, you look at Dream's hex flash, and you go, Shalka, this is your shot. That cooldown, that is your ticket to victory, because Dream's is not missing these hooks. He's finding wonder every single time, and that's what they need. 
They also need to reclaim, reclaim vision inside of their jungle because that is that is the thing. If they're able to hold on to vision in top side and especially around the Baron buff and stop G2 from trying to sneak that with the Kalista, like you buy yourself the extra time, and it also means it's so much easier to walk in as a group because the second you don't have full information or you're getting pushed out in all of your three lanes and you're having to spread across the map and then you know cautiously huddle back together, that's when a team like G2 is, is going to be especially looking to pounce with a comp like this. Um, so now that Wonder is in the topside river, I'm already expecting to see them start that up as soon as they possibly can because, again, the itemization is there now for Wonder. And the good news is Shalka have some defensive vision. Of course, Control Ward in the pit denies them anything too certain, but Gilius does spot out the initial Baron aggro coming in from the side of G2 Esports. But as we get later and later, the good news is Inax is getting stronger. The Death Cap completed the Luden's Echo as well. So the minefield especially crucial against Callista, one of the few zoning tools that might be able to keep her away if Inax is ever... Missed posi or missed position, so I don't know. I, I still think that the team fight potential from Shalka is there. However, single yeah. mistake around the pit just ends the game. I, I I would also say the biggest threat for Shalka in a team fight probably isn't Wonder. It's probably Perks and his ab ability to jump into the backline onto an Abadage or onto an Inax. Like obviously Wonder is going to be a big deal, but. He is not going to be the one that's ending your fight immediately by diving into your backline. That is where Perks is going to come into play. So I think Dreams needs to be really on point with how he peels for his backline because Perks, Yankos, Mickey are all going to be looking to use their ultimates to dive into the Shalka backline. Yeah, it's just this team fight seems so incredibly difficult to coordinate because if you ignore the Callista, she will kill people, but mm -hmm. you can't ignore the Akali because she'll kill them much faster. So it's just. You have to play flawlessly, really, to avoid <laughs> getting just instantly losing a fight to one of these champions. And Axe is only going to make it harder. Mickey's only going to make it harder because while they're not the main damage threats for this team, they have a lot of defensive tools that make it pretty impossible for Gilius to go for a reliable, you know, insect for Abadage to try to do something similar with the Azir. So, uh, if I'm honest, it's just waiting to see if Shalka can execute. It feels like a, yeah. a button check, a skill test, a shot calling test here in the fights to come, and. Well, G2 are starting the test. They started up the Baron, and now Shalka have to respond here. But G2 will back off. Not going to yeah. take any risks. Well, it's also, for Shalka, it's not about, like, they don't want to be the team that's initiating fights. It's just sometimes you have to, right? If you're getting split up across the map, if the enemy team is on an objective or has a Baron and is trying to end the game. So their entire game plan is try to... Oh, no, wait. Wait a second. Oh, no, me. Okay, it's gonna be all right. I was I was really worried about him for a second there. Um, Ooh, but perks, perks can't be sure can flip over the wall. Otherwise, he was definitely dead. Yeah, mm, but but Shalka's entire game plan is like limit the amount of situations where you are almost forced to start off a fight. Right? That means have vision on Baron. That means poke them out. You know, as much as you can. That means don't be you know, forced up without any vision inside your jungle where you have to face check. Because when they're the team that's initiating fights. That means that Dreams isn't there to peel perks off of his backline. That means they have to play that much better to execute in the situations. Their ideal setup is forcing G2 to come into them, not allowing G2 to split push on them, not allowing G2 to pick up an objective like the Baron buff. If they can stop that from happening, they're going to look much, much better the later we go. And I think it gets harder, though, because Dragon, their sole point is coming through for G2 now as they cleared out that second Infernal. Triple Infernal buff plus Infernal Soul is going to be a lot more damage. Not that G2 particularly needed it, but Chalka kind of has to respect the Dragons, another place for G2 to be at any given moment. And they can't put all of their vision on both of the objectives. They just do not I just don't think they have enough. Well, they just don't have mid control, right? If you can't actually have priority and that initial push on mid lane, well, then you can't actually take the paths where you can walk over and clear vision like Mickey is doing right now. So you're always going to be playing without that much information, which means every single move you make has to be more cautious, has to be more calculated, and all of a sudden you have to commit multiple members to an area just to get vision that you wouldn't necessarily want to have, and that spreads your team very, very thin. And what's crazy to me, Ender, is that how for how explosively this game started off for G2 Esports, I was I was starting to expect to see something similar to what we saw when it was the Pantheon Talia combo and Yankos was roaming around the map and it was just these 20 minute games where G2 just murdered their opponent. But despite Wonder's lead, Shock have done a really good job of coming back. Well, and you can see it in G2's play. That one's not gonna work out, sadly. But you can see it in G2's play because they're playing with so much more respect for Shalka. Yeah, I mean, it's a combination of respect, but it's also like, how do G2 force plays? Like, how do you initiate a team fight? It is really, really hard. As perks in the bot lane. Gonna take a bit of damage, but it's just gonna... Yeah, it just walks away from that. 
Good damage coming from Odo, though. Still chasing, still threatening. Doesn't want Perks to be able to heal up too comfortably. And in the meantime, it's just going to be the two-man Baron stack. Of course, a lot of lifesteal coming in from the side of Wonder. Nothing there for Yankos, but he's not too concerned. Can heal up off the Rek'Sai passive. And Dalka now starting to collapse as Caps and Mickey will start to speed in. Mickey needs to be the zone control. 3k getting lower. You should not be able to miss a smite with the Callista there. The Ren's going to come through. The Baron has come through as well. Mickey is going to be sacrificed here, but Gilius now on the backside. Wants to get the fight kicked off. Can kick in. The Flash comes through. Gilius has to kick him out to safety. Not the fight that Shalka needed. G2 already escaping with the Baron, but the shutdown oh, no. is a It's a messy fight. And it's parked on the back line, and Shalka are now set to be absolutely dissected, but they stay strong as four. And they force Perks away. Two members down, three members down on the side of G2. Oh, it's such a good fight there from Shalki. Even though they end up giving the Baron, they're going to be able to lick their wounds and only sacrifice Gilius in the process. This is the opportunity where they can't quite push for a tower in the mid lane, aren't going to be able to pick up any more gold off of that play, but they take the Baron buff off of so many members, really limiting the power here, and especially taking off on Wonder. Now, watch this, because again, it is Dreams finding the pick there on to make it with a pretty nice uh, layer of abilities, coming through from Inax as well to get the slam dunk with the Mega Inferno Bomb, but then watch the play down here on towards Wonder, and watch Odo in particular. He cues on to Wonder, gets behind him, and then knocks him back in towards the rest of the team. Getting that kill made this fight so, so much easier, and when Shaka get together in a death ball like this, Perks really doesn't have great angles to come in and attack. Just excellent play, as you said. Really, Gilius burning the initial flash coming out from Wonder. The follow-up there from Odawamini, knowing that cooldown was down. It's good coordination. Sadly, not enough to stop the Baron from going in the favor of G2. So Shaka's still very much playing in the hole. They are in a deficit. Almost 5k down up against G2. 58 seconds. So that Infernal Dragon spawns. It will mean Infernal Soul for G2 if they can secure it. Shaka know where they need to fight, but at the same time, if they push for the Dragon, you could have Wonder on the top side pushing for an inhibitor or perks. It's a very hard game to play out. Oh, Shalka are so close to getting back into this one here. This is another fight that they're going to be forced to take, almost. Even with Yankos up on the top side of the map, like, Shalka are going to need to do something. Now, I kind of like this move out of Yankos, because I believe... No, he wasn't one of the players that was able to keep his Baron buff, so he will just be trying to get this shove and forcing uh, Abadage to pick that one up before the dragon does spawn. What this does, it means that G2 get full control down in this bot side jungle. Ooh, Gilius, though. Getting singled out, getting caught out by Perks, will get kicked back. Oh. Now it's the dash back to safety, but Odawami with a beautiful knockback, not enough at the end. Odawami now going to be taken out as well. Gilius overstaying as well, but no, Odawami still oh. shut down. Coming through, now it's Dreams on the backside, getting shredded by Wonder. It's a messy fight. Shalka, they've been torn apart, they split up their team, and now it's Abadage and Inax versus the world. Odawami out on a sliver of health, but Abadage's just next on the menu. He's going to dash out to safety, but now Shalka, they're going to have to give up some of their base. Oh, that fight was all over the place, and that's exactly what G2 wants. With the Baron buff too, Inax can't actually clear away these minions, so the inhibitor is going to fall, and G2 should be able to go back and pick up the Baron. Oh, maybe Wonder wants to go back in. Wonder is getting frisky. Odawami gonna try to find the knockback. He has just enough damage to survive. There's so many spears, but the Ren didn't happen. Now Yankos, though, it's Abadaki. He's getting caught out. Inax is running out of mana rapidly, but it's a triple kill coming in for the Azir, and he dies, but it is absolutely worth it. It's a hero play right there from Abadage, right? Picks up the triple kill and also eliminates Yankos. Now Gilius is going to sprint immediately towards that Infernal Drake with Dreams closely behind him. But keep in mind, Perks has now respawned as well. So Shalka are going to have to act very quickly against this objective or Perks is just going to wipe them up. Hellport's now coming in. Perks and Cap zooming there. There's additional healing, additional protection for Perks. Not a ton of damage for Caps, just a lot of lethality at this stage. Gilius is going to break that one down and they buy themselves more time, but now Perks is hunting. Dreams is there as well. Inax the only source of damage, easy for the Akali to avoid, just zoning out with the ultimate. Gilius is going to get taken down. Inax now has to run for his life. Dreams in a similar situation, but Inax now the one in trouble. Caps though, taking a lot of damage back Ooh. the auto. The Zonias, it's going to be enough, but now Perks is hunting them down left and right. Dreams just doesn't have anything left. He cannot keep his team alive. He tried so hard in that fight, but G2 come out on top. G2 might be able to push straight down mid lane too. You can already see Wonder teleported into that mid wave. Abadage and Odwamni are furiously trying to clear those minions away, and I think they will be able to get it in time. So the game does extend, but honestly, we're looking at a second inhibitor going down inside of that bottom lane, and probably one more fight for G2 to try and close this one out. And just remember, at any moment, if one of these Shalka members dies, the game probably ends. There's so much pressure on Odwamni and Abadage right now. And Axe will be up in 20 seconds. At least not too far off. As you said, one tower, four now. Let's see if Shalka can push G2 back, or if they're going to try to force for more. Protobelt forward from Mickey. 
Now walk away. A lot of damage present on the Shalka side. Can not afford to miss position as G2. Look ready to end this one. They're pushing in. Wow. They've got the wave there as well. Wonders just shredding through that tower. Big Ziggs ult now coming in. A lot of damage there on Caps. Caps has been caught out. Caps isolated. Caps taken down. Oluwamne finding the kill in the end. Gilius goes to the backside, but he gets knocked up. The kick is denied. He only manages to knock Yankos away from the fight as Perks dashes in and dashes right back out. That's the G2 now on the retreat. Just testing. Just trying to find weaknesses into Shalka. But Shalka, no, this is their chance. Maybe they can find a fight win here. Cannot afford to split. The Wamne playing with oh. fire, but he will back off. It's just so hard for Shalka to chase people down after the fight, unless Dream's in range of them. They're able to hold on for a little bit longer. And honestly, it's it would be hard to ask for two better champions to sort of hold the line at your Nexus than the Azir and the Zig. We'll see this fight one more time because Caps goes nuts at the start of this one. He flashes forward to auto attack and look for a W on towards Abadage, which doesn't quite connect. And then it is this huge Inferno Bomb that nukes Caps and Dream's flashing forward one more time to pick him off. But the fight gets interrupted with some nice CC there from Mickey Epps to stop the insect play from Gilius because if Gilius gets that one off, I think that's just a hard one fight. Perks now coming into the backside. He's just shredding for the entire team. The Galio's coming in too, and they decided the game is over. Shout, you do not get to play Holy. anymore, League of Legends, because now G2 is angry, and they're looking to end the game just like that. It was back and forth. Shalka had hopes. Shalka had dreams, but no longer. G2 are looking to end. G2 on a rampage right there. Zoomin' with the TP buffs off of that play. G2 done playing with their food. They want to close this one out. 258 days since G2 last beat Shalka, and it looks like that's the highest the number's ever going to get, because Gilius gets taken out, and G2 walk right into the base, looking to hold on to sole control of first place with a win over Shalka, no fear. Good stuff there from G2. I mean, it, it got a little hairy in that mid-game, right? Weren't quite sure how to close that one out, but just watching perks in some of these team fights is a beautiful, beautiful thing, because... Like, he just made Shalka feel so bad about every decision they made, constantly jumping forward to find the picks. And uh, <laughs> let's be honest, Chrissy, when we prepped for this game, we were like, this is probably, like, Shalka has been getting better. Don't get me wrong, Shalka are looking better and better, but nobody is touching G2 right now. G2 is 20 minute, 25 minutes games every single game, but Shalka changed that. That was an incredible performance from this team. And while, yes, they are not going to make playoffs this time around, I'm ready to see what this team can do coming into summer split. Yeah, I mean, this was one of those teams where it felt like they started the season four or five weeks later than everyone else, right? They couldn't quite figure out the roster they wanted to go with. And then once they did, they started taking some, some good wins. And I think it was a constant improvement towards the end of the season. I think uh, they have a lot to be proud of with the changes they made and how they have improved towards the end. But at the end of the day, G2... Still clearly the superior team, your Kia player of the game. At LEC on Twitter is the place to vote. You can pick between Wonder, Yankos, or Perks, that G2 top side of the map. We're going to go away for a quick break, but when we come back, more LEC content that you